In this video, we will demonstrate some techniques for monitoring and managing AWS IoT Core MQTT traffic. You'll see a demonstration of how MQTT traffic can be tracked against a predefined quota and what happens if the quota is exceeded. We'll also use Amazon CloudWatch metrics and CloudWatch alarms to create an automated notification so that we can be informed if we are approaching a quota limit as well as when a quota limit is breached. My name is Chris Green. I'm an IoT Specialist Solutions Architect in the AWS Worldwide Specialist Organization. Before we dive into the details, let's first define a few terms, beginning with MQTT. MQTT is a lightweight published subscribe messaging protocol that is designed to minimize network bandwidth and device resource requirements. MQTT is often used in IoT use cases and is the primary communications protocol used by AWS IoT Core customers. The AWS IoT Core Device Gateway provides support for MQTT based on both the MQTT 3.1.1 and 5.0 specifications. The AWS IoT Core Device Gateway supports other protocols such as HTTP, WebSockets and LoRaWAN, but in this video we're focused on the MQTT protocol. If you'd like more information on the AWS IoT Core Device Gateway and the supported protocols, I recommend you start by reading the AWS IoT Core FAQs and the Connecting to AWS IoT Core documentation. You'll find links to the documentation in the notes below. Another key concept we need to understand is quotas. In general, quotas are used to limit the consumption of resources. Quotas in AWS services, also referred to as limits, are the maximum values for the consumption of resources, actions and items by entities in your AWS account. Each AWS service defines its quotas and establishes default values for those quotas. In the case of AWS IoT, the quota we are focusing on in this video is the MQTT Publish Requests Per Second Per Connection, which is limited to 100 messages per second. Messages published at a rate that exceeds the 100 messages per second quota will be throttled, that is, discarded, and an error will be returned to the originating MQTT client for each attempted publish request that is discarded. It's up to the originating client to take corrective action, such as retrying the publish request. The quota consumption is calculated and acted upon every second. Some allowance is made for burst traffic higher than the specified quota within the one second evaluation period, but the quota logic will begin to throttle traffic after the initial burst allowance. MQTT traffic volumes and the associated quota consumption can be monitored using Amazon CloudWatch metrics. For example, in our case, we're most interested in the publish in success and throttle exceeded metrics. We'll walk through the process of configuring CloudWatch to monitor this traffic later in the video. So let's move on to the demonstration. We'll use the pubsub.py sample provided in the AWS IoT Python SDK samples on GitHub to generate our test traffic. For this demonstration, I've added some extra code to the standard sample to capture and display the timing and the message counts. On the right we have the original pubsub.py from GitHub and on the left we have the modified version for this test. So focusing on the changes in the left hand pane, highlighted in red, we can see that we've imported two Python modules, random and signal. Uh, we've added counters and uh, an array to capture the published information and also added some timing variables in lines 53 to 55. In lines 86 to 109 we define an interrupt handler and register that handler using the signals module. The interrupt handler will print some final statistics and terminate the program. In lines 114 to 124 we are defining some variables to capture timing information and we're initializing the start and end time variables. On lines 128 and 130 we've defined a function that will print out our counters and our timing information. On lines 136 and 137 we initialize some timing information in the main section of the program. The main changes in the following section of the code are on lines 178 where we change the message body to be a well formatted JSON payload with some random values and on line 181 where we actually capture the result of the published message. 
Lines 204 onwards will execute if everything goes well. That is, if we receive all of the messages that we've published and we don't have to control C to interrupt the program. Our overall end-to-end -end architecture looks something like this. From left to right, we're using the sample Python client to generate the traffic. The sample is configured to use an X509 certificate that was provisioned earlier. The pubsub.py client will use the X509 certificate to establish a mutually authenticated TLS 1.2 session MQTT connection with the AWS IoT Core Gateway. The client will then publish the number of messages specified on the command line to AWS IoT Core. Let's make sure this simple test is working for us first. So here we are in our test environment. On the left we have a terminal where we will execute the Python sample client and on the right we have the AWS IoT console where we've selected the MQTT test client and subscribed to the SDK test Python topic. In the command line we're providing the following arguments. First of all the endpoint is set to the endpoint of our uh, AWS IoT Core Gateway. We also have a number of certificates defined, the root certificate, the certificate for this particular device, and the private key for this certificate. We're specifying the client ID, basic pub sub, and the topic that we are uh, publishing to. And in this case we'll just publish 100 messages, which should complete well within a second. So here we go we should see the messages appear on the right hand side of the screen. And there we go, that has worked as expected. We have a number of messages that have appeared on the screen in the console. And you can see here that we published 100 messages, we received the same 100 messages, and we published them at a rate of 208 messages per second. Remember that we do have that provision for burst traffic that allows us to publish greater than 100 in a single second. We can run the same test again. This time we'll specify 200 messages to publish. And that is completed successfully also. You'll notice that our measurement there indicates that we published 392 messages per second, but because this was all within one second, we publish those within the burst allowance. Let's update this to 300. Again, we're successful. And again, because we were within the burst limit. Let's swap this just a little more to 350 and we should see some throttling taking effect. You'll notice on this occasion that it appears that we've successfully published 350 messages but we seem to be stalled when we've received only 314 of those. This is because our client has been written in a way that doesn't take into consideration that a publish request may have failed. In the sample code you can see that even though we are using quality of service 1, where the broker will send back a pub ack acknowledgement for a successful publish, we don't check the return value of the publish method. So it appears to the sample client that all publish attempts were successful. That is why we see the published equals 350 message on the output, but in fact only 315 were successfully published and 35 failed due to messages being published at a rate greater than 100 per second for more than one second, which in turn triggered the throttling and 35 messages were dropped. At this point the client will wait forever because it is waiting for the received all event, which is never set because the received count does not and will never equal the published count when published messages are dropped. I have added some signal handling code to the client to print results when we stop the client with a control C. We can see that while most of the published requests were successful, 35 failed with an AWS error, MQTT timeout error. This is the only feedback the client receives when a throttling event has occurred. This brings us to our next requirement. How do we monitor the volume of MQTT traffic so that we know when we are approaching a quota limit? And how do we receive alerts when a quota limit is exceeded and a throttling event is triggered? Here's an example graph from the CloudWatch console showing the traffic volume in blue over a five minute period 
and the throttle exceeded metric count of 35 in orange that corresponds to the 35 messages that were dropped during our test. This graph also includes two optional markers that I created showing an arbitrary soft threshold of 3000 messages per minute and the quota limit of 6000 messages per minute which is equivalent to 100 messages per second. These are simple horizontal annotations on the graph that serve as a nice visual reference but they're not related to any alarms or notifications. Next we'll walk through the steps to create a notification when a throttling event has occurred. In the CloudWatch console we'll create a new alarm and select the metric we want to use as the basis for the alarm. Next we'll open the IoT protocol metrics. In this case I have already filtered the list with the keyword throttle. Then we select the metric we are interested in. In our example, we will use the throttle exceeded metric, but there are many more metrics that you can explore. We then specify the time window over which the metric will be evaluated and the threshold value. In this example, I've set the threshold value to zero because I want to be notified of all throttle exceeded events. Now we can specify the Amazon Simple Notification Service, or SNS, topic that we will use to send our notifications. In this case, we are creating a new topic and specifying the email address that will receive the notifications. This can be a comma-separated list of individual email addresses or a single email alias that resolves to a group of recipients in your organisation. We then give our new alarm a name and description. We can skip the remaining optional actions and create the alarm. We will now see the new alarm in the list of alarms in the CloudWatch console. At this point the alarm is enabled, but we need to confirm the SNS email recipient before notification emails will be sent. When we created the SNS topic, we specified an email address. The SNS service sent an email to that address asking the recipient to confirm they want to subscribe to the notifications. The SNS confirmation email looks like this. You simply click the confirm subscription link to enable notifications. Now the alarm is enabled and the notifications are enabled, but the alarm state is showing as insufficient data. This is actually the default initial state of a new alarm until metric data has been received, at which point it will transition to either the alarm or OK state depending on the metric data received. When the alarm threshold is breached and the notification is triggered, the notification email will look something like this. You can see the key data points I have highlighted with the red boxes. In this case, there were 86 throttle exceeded events in the evaluation period. So we've seen how we can monitor MQTT traffic and raise alerts when traffic quotas are exceeded. Now let's look at techniques you can employ to work within and even go beyond the MQTT 100 messages per second quota. As we have already seen, we can use Amazon CloudWatch metrics and alarms to monitor the volume of MQTT traffic and alert us when the quota is approached or breached. Another option we have is to control the behavior of the client. You could include logic in your client to ensure that your publish rate does not exceed 100 messages per second. Uh, quite often you don't need to send all data captured at the edge, so you can consider filtering data before publishing the MQTT messages. You could batch multiple data records into a single MQTT message instead of publishing a message for every data point. And you could take advantage of the built-in retry logic in the AWS IoT SDK. You can also test your device using the AWS IoT Core Device Advisor testing service, which is free to ensure your client conforms to the AWS best practice for connecting and publishing, subscribing and retrying. You can find a link to the Device Advisor service in the notes below. You could consider spreading the MQTT traffic across multiple clients, each using its own unique identity. And finally, you could consider using other high volume alternative services such as Amazon Kinesis data streams to ingest millions of messages per second if required. So that concludes the demonstration. We now have a clear understanding of the meaning of the terms quota and throttle in the context of AWS IoT core services 
And we've seen a demonstration of AWS IoT Core MQTT publish throttling in action when we attempted to publish 350 messages in one second. We also saw how Amazon CloudWatch can be used to monitor the MQTT traffic and to alert us when a specified metric threshold is breached. And finally, we looked at strategies you can employ to manage and even go beyond the 100 messages per second quota. Please see the links to the reference material provided below for further information. Thank you for watching.